from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering the ScienceLogic Symposium 2019. Brought to you by ScienceLogic. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE's coverage of ScienceLogic Symposium 2019 here at the Ritz-Carlton in Washington, D.C. First of all, I want to welcome back to the program Raj Putnam, who's the Vice President of Global Solutions at ScienceLogic. Thanks for coming back. And welcome to the program, a first time, Rob Gruner, listed as a solutions architect from Telstra. But Rob, I actually had a chance to talk to some of your cohorts there, and they said, oh, Rob, Rob's a wizard. He's an engineer that does everything. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, solutions architect, of course, we know. They're, they're, they're out there, they do a lot of different things, and uh, at least your, your, your peers say uh, you're, you're somebody that does quite a lot of different things. I did. Jack of all trades, master of none, unfortunately, but <laughs> we'll see how we go. <laughs> uh, it, it's all right, don't you know, it, it yeah. is in vogue now to be, you know, a general Generalist, it's uh, you know we, we've gone from specialties to well oh no it's it's platforms and everything's going to be everything so um, I have plenty of background with Telstra but maybe talk a little bit about uh, you know your role in the organization and what what kind of things you're involved in since uh, you know some of those trades that you are, are jack of all <laughs> <laughs> it's probably. Um I suppose I've come into Telstra as an acquisition. So, uh, you know, working for a small company, you, you tend to do everything. Uh, and for some reason, I've been allowed to continue to do that. So, uh, and I've developed an expertise around science logic, and that means I've been involved across a lot of areas of the business as we've been adopting science logic more widely. And um, yeah, it's been quite an interesting process. So it means I can take that expertise and then see how it's applied across the organization. So it's been quite interesting. Awesome, one, one of the things that's been interesting to me is so, you know, talking to the service providers, talking to the enterprise customers, is to, you know, how many tools they had, how many they replaced with Science Logic, but also what things it's integrating with and working with. That was a big focus on the keynote this morning is, mm. you know, integrations with ITSM and, a, you know, all, all these various pieces. So mm. may, maybe give us a little bit of kind of the scope you know, how long has Telstra been using Science Logic? How broad's the deployment? And you know, what 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 does it do, and what does it tie into? Uh, at the moment, it's more enterprise focused. So, uh, and that's the area of Telstra I come from. So, it's really around delivering services to our customers. Uh, quite recently, we've been uh, then looking in deploying Science Logic across our carriage space and managing services there. That's quite a large deployment. Um, you know, we're quite um, happy with that in terms of what it's going to be doing for the business. Uh, and the integrations there are endless. So Telstra, like a lot of large organizations, has a lot of different systems to talk to, a lot of different service tests, depending on the operational areas. So um, you know, ServiceNow is one of those, but there's a whole heap of other stuff. Uh, and so that's a very challenging process. So, and ScienceLogic's been pretty good at uh, you know, spreading itself around those. So, yeah, yeah. Give us a little insight as to mm -hmm. you know, how fast things are changing. Uh, you know, I hear Kafka and streams and you know, constantly moving. I've, I've been looking at the you know, Kubernetes and container stuff that's happening, which is, which is fast moving. So, oh, definitely. <laughs> so, yeah, and Telstra is trying as hard as it can to move as quickly as the market can allow it. So, uh, definitely, it's virtualizing, it's it's automating. AI ops is a big component of what we're doing, and uh, yeah, it's extremely important for the business. So. Okay, so AI ops is something you're doing. <laughs> I have to admit, we're not did, as mature did, yeah. as we'd like to be. Well, so did, uh, I'm yeah. not sure if you saw the keynote this morning, but they yeah. put out a maturity model. So would love for you to, you know, where are you when you look at, they kind of had the, 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 the three criteria there. Is there's kind of the, the machine learning, there's the automation, and I'm mm -hmm. trying to remember the, the, the third piece that was there. But, you know, yeah. where, where are you today? You know, how'd you get there? And, you know, what, what's, what's a little bit of the roadmap going forward? Oh, I think it might be, um, probably our ambitions to be in that the, the upper end of the spectrum and in, into remediation, but uh, that's an ambition, and I think we've got a, a while to go with that, so uh, yeah. <laughs> more than that I can't really comment on. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's interesting, so they have the, the keynote tomorrow, they're going to have Gene Kim uh, mm. speaking on the DevOps, and uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the Phoenix Project, and they talked about you know, the jack of all trades that does it all. He can sometimes be the bottleneck in the system. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Because you can't be, oh, I need something fixed. Well, we'll go to Rob, Rob will fix it, that's great. Mm. That fire floating mode, I know I've done that in my career, mm. and it's one of those things, oh geez, you're never going to move out of this job because you're irreplaceable. It's like, that's a dangerous place to be. It's it is, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we talk a little bit about, you know, you, you said, you know, science logic, mm -hmm. you know, that they position themselves as this is going to help you move at, you know, machine speed and keep up with that. Give us a little bit of the reality of what you're seeing, how, what does that impact your job, your organization? Um, oh look, I, I think science logic has done a, a wonderful job within the organization. Uh, it's, it's the legacy infrastructure within any organization, particularly at Telstra scale, that's really holding you back, so. 
Uh, and there's a lot of will, I think, at a people level within Telstra to move as quickly as we can, but we have such a, a large number of legacy systems to deal with. Um, you know, we're looking at one uh, deployment of science logic where we're looking at 18 systems to kill. So uh, that's a big task. Yeah, so, the, the, yeah. the, the wonderful technical debt that we've all inherited. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. so uh, you know, Rajay, you know, th this is something we hear from all customers. It, it'd be lovely if I had the mythical, you know, unicorn that you know starts from the ground up and you know it can start afresh. But we always have to have that mix. And uh, give, give us a little bit about what you're seeing, uh, you know, both the Telstra and a little bit broader. You know, I think what Telstra has done really well with taking advantage of our technology was they didn't come in with this attitude of I'm going to rip out everything that we have and just have a magic easy button. Software doesn't work that way. I think we've all learned the lessons of tough deployments that when you try to auto fix everything. So they came in with a really gradual phased approach of get a couple pieces done where they had gaps. We started to fill those gaps. And what ended up happening during that last few years is we've seen this shift, greater change, and so they've taken advantage of the platform's functionality as a whole as they go through their digitization efforts. And so as they digitize, they're taking this step-by-step -step approach to you know, what you were saying earlier with what Rob does, he doesn't answer the question of being the one man band. What they did was they build it all process-wise using software to drive the automation. So once it's done one time, you're not stuck on the person anymore. And so I think when we look at our most successful customers like Telstra, it's because they've had this gradual phased approach where they're using software rather than single person bottlenecks and rather than having these tiger teams to try to solve problems and moving towards a, a better process to take advantage of the world we're in today. Yeah. So, Rob, how do you measure success? You know, what are some of the business outcomes or you know KPIs that you, you understand how you're, you're moving from kind of where you were to where you want to be? Uh, that's a difficult one to uh, to answer because, um, particularly with science logic, was used in so many different contexts. So, um, for a certain part of the business, we might say, you know, are we monitoring the full stack? Are we giving customers real value and visibility through the whole um, dynamic of their business? Uh, and then in another context, we're using science logic where we're just saying we, we just need to deploy at scale, we need to onboard as quickly as possible, we need to keep the cost down to a minimum, we need to keep events as low as possible. Okay, so it, it's more about the efficiency argument. So uh, it really depends on where we're trying to use it and how we're deploying it. So, yeah. yeah. It, how do you have visibility across how everybody's doing and getting trained on the latest things and keeping up to date and sharing best practices? How, how do you manage that internally and how do, how, do you, how do you network with your peers on some of that? Well, we've tried to um, really, within TELS, we have a, a concept of center of excellence. So it's really about you know, being recognized as the business uh, experts in, in a particular area and, and allowing the business to understand that that's, that's where the expertise sits. Uh, and uh, certainly we've done a very good job with that. And then allowing and communicating that out to the business as well. So it's a very tough ask though. It's a big business. We have 30,000 people. So often one person doesn't know about another person, another floor in the building. So, uh, you know, to try and spread it across the business, we have 50 offices worldwide. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's a process, yeah. You know, I, I mean, Roger, just one, one of the things I hear is, you know, science logic, it's not a widget. And it's, you know, can fit in a lot of different environments and a lot of different uses. Um, you know, I heard of, you know, strong emphasis in, into training. Had your CEO on wearing his wizard's hat to, for, for, for the the, the e-learning knowledge uh, that was going to happen. So, um, you know, talk a little bit about how Science Logic is looking to address this, especially for some, you know, large customers like Telstra. You know, I think there's a general skills gap in, as a whole beyond our technology, beyond what's taking place in the world today. And you know, it, I've been at the business for quite a while and we've long focused on training the operator on how to utilize the technology to solve their specific problems. And while that, those aspects are really powerful, some of the things we've done recently to go a step further is when we hear similar questions, we started to record all of those so our customers can watch videos of how to solve problems. Instead of just going onto some forum and let me type some question and hope somebody responds to it in the future, you have Reddit for that. So we've got to look at a better mechanism. And video-based training, hand -hand handling the customers, we can build out these use cases, drives the platform value. And what Telstra does that's really unique is they use the platform less so from a perspective of can I manage XYZ technology, but what can I build on top of it? How can I break the platform to some extent? And Rob is a mad scientist for us here. <laughs> and he can jump into this more, but they've broken the platform to solve those business needs by addressing them individually. And what we've done is we've taken his best practices and we roll them back out to the rest of our customers. So with, with Rob at Telstra and a couple of our other really great customers, we're driving the, a better community and sense of community. So less question and answer form, less traditional support, more video, more community, more shareability. And that's where you're going to get additional quality coming out from the products that are being delivered.
makes sense to you, Rob? Or no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah Rob, I mean, yeah. I, I, I'd love any commentary on that. You know, the network effect of software, especially you would talk about SaaS or as a service type mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when Salesforce originally came out. It was like, oh wait, one customer asked for something and wait, everybody can take advantage of that or something similar. So mm -hmm. are you seeing that kind of dynamics today with, with ScienceLogic and with others? Well, particularly within the Telstra business, yeah, absolutely. So um, by building a capability in one area, you can share it across. And, and we found that you know, we've been able to then um, sell the system internally to our internal stakeholders, so they, they appreciate the value of it and we can build on that. And then our customers, whilst we don't necessarily lead with the product, they can uh, they see what's going on and they, they basically then take it on as a service as well. So it's a very, very interesting process. All right, so Rob, one thing we haven't talked about yet, let's yeah. talk about data. You know, what, mm. what's the role of data in your environment? It's something that's you know, key to the platform um, from science logic. How are you leveraging it? How is that changing in your environment? And what are the opportunities there? Yeah, it's an interesting question. So as a telco, we collect a lot of data. Yeah. And, and obviously we have federal agencies who, uh, who make that a requirement as well. So we have a, an existing uh, data lake uh, initiative, uh, and that's very full at the moment, and, and science logic is where we're looking at you know, how can we can add to that, the value, valuable information that it provides. Um, but like everyone else, there's a lot of data to collect, and, and it's an interesting process to try and make sense out of it and, then, and react accordingly. I mean, as a business, we, we're responding to millions and millions of events a, year, a day, so it's, yeah, it's a difficult thing. Yeah, uh, w one of the things when we look at uh, things like, you know, anything that requires training, like machine learning or, or the like, mm. there's the balance between, I want to learn from everybody, but you know, you're in a competitive marketplace. I don't mm. want my competitors necessarily to get things, so mm. you know, the software product usually, well, I can isolate and it doesn't have specific information, but how do you look at that dynamic of making sure that you gain from what the industry's doing, but that you, know, you can still stay competitive and ahead of your competition? Uh, I don't know if I necessarily can answer that. I, I suppose my head's tied into really what I can do with the platform and, and how I can then um, bring new technologies into the company. So that's really, I suppose, where my space is. Yeah. Uh, and really that's what I'm focused on. So you know, what we do with the data probably is, is not necessarily a bigger concern. So. Fair enough. Yeah. How about, th there, there was uh, quite a lot of announcements this week. So mm -hmm. a number of integrations uh, as well as you know, updates to the product. Anything specifically that you've been waiting for or that has caught your eye? Um, the service now integration, I think, is far more advanced than it has been in the past. Uh, and we have aspects of the business who use Sync Server quite heavily. So the fact that that's now matured and uh, it's much more robust and you know, rich sort of offering, is, yeah, that'll uh, have a lot of impact on the business. So, yeah, definitely. I mean, the machine learning is another great thing. Uh, and it's a question of then how that develops over time. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, Roger, I'd love every, you know, what, what I've been digging into some is the feedback you've been getting from customers and what's been leading to, you know, some of the enhancements. So I uh, would love, love your take on what you're seeing. You know, I think one of the things that Telstra pushed us towards a few years back was we're going to build, we already have a data lake. We don't need you to function as our data lake, so it's multiple different data lakes. And this concept of how do I move data from one data lake to a different data lake, lakes within lakes, ponds, whatever the, the terminology is today. It's the data ocean is the what data we call ocean. it. Perfect. Actually. Perfect. Yes. And, and when getting to that data ocean from our lake, we have to go get streaming data. So now we're going to get streams again. So really geographic here. But um, you know, Rob really pushed us to make sure we could go right to Kafka buses and push data out. So what do you do with the data? And so Telstra, has been a you know an early adopter of a lot of our technology, and by being an early adopter, they've pushed us in a, a number of directions. So I think when you see a lot of the functionality that we've released this week and we've announced, it's been because of our customer base, because of our partners like Telstra that need to drive the business for, further and forward. And especially in an industry like the telco world, where everything is mobile, everything's moving so fast and aggressively, they're really like a good sounding board for where we need to go and how do we get there. And and that drive and that partnership is what I think I'm most excited about working with Telstra is. They, they, they demand from us to be excellent, and that gets great product coming out, and we see the results this week with the, all of our customers excitedly looking at the stream, streaming capability that Rob was pushing us for well in advance of anyone else. Yeah. Rob, I want to give you the final word. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, I, I, I can't help but notice you actually have co-branded shirts. You've got Telstra on your arm with, with the science logic uh, there, so mm -hmm. uh, obviously more than just a vendor relationship there. Uh, maybe close this out with you know, how important science logic is to, to your business oh, and your job. It's a critical part of the business. I mean, um, particularly where we're looking at the commodity aspect of our managed services, um, you know, we can't survive unless we can provide quality and valuable information to our customers, and really science logic has been the key platform for that. So. In some respects, we're resting a, you know, an aspect of the business entirely in ScienceLogic's hands, and uh, we're hoping they'll deliver. <laughs> so.
<laughs> well, yeah. Robin Raj, thank you so much for joining and sharing all the all of uh, the the progress that you've made and uh, you know where things are going. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks, Stu. All right, and uh, I'm Stu Miniman. Uh, this is the Cube at Science Logic Symposium 2019. Thanks for watching.